Um, this is a clip on the gist of classical conditioning. Now, I'm going to assume that you've already been taught this with your teachers, because otherwise we'll be here for like half an hour. Um, if you haven't, you should still be able to understand it by going through it, but I'm not going to talk about key terms in too much detail or too much about Pavel or anything like that. So it's just kind of more of a making you feel a bit happier about classical conditioning, because I know that some bits of it can, can be a bit confusing. So firstly, why, why do you need to know about classical conditioning? Well, it appears twice in the AS, so it appears first of all in attachment, so you'll do it in with the learning theory, and you will also come across it um, when you do abnormality, so you'll do um, it in terms of being explained the behaviour model. So, you know that classical conditioning is part of the behaviour model. So very, I'll very briefly just remind you of the behaviour model. So the behaviour model, if you're thinking, oh, what was that again? Think behaviour, behavioural model. And it's all about people's behaviour. It's not about what they're thinking, it's what they can, what, what people are doing. And so the behaviourists only really um, believe in things that they can observe. They're very scientific, as you know, I'm sure, um, and they're sort of kind of, yeah, looking at observable things. Now, as you know, classical conditioning, operant conditioning, social learning theory are the main parts of behaviourism. And so only today we're going to talk about classical conditioning. Now, classical conditioning started off with Pavlov. And I'm not going to go into detail about that, I'm sure your teachers explained you. And if you go to Wikipedia, there's loads on Pavlov. But it started with Pavlov, and just think about it as, I always think about it as a st stimulus response, stimulus response. And classical conditioning is all about learning through association. So it's learning to associate one thing with another. Now also I think what's really important to remember is that with classical conditioning, the response has to be a biological, natural response. Um, and that's what I think people forget, which is why they get a bit confused. So, for instance, fear, um, hunger, thirst, lust, that type of thing. It has to be a kind of a, a, a natural biological response. So, now, the key terms freak people out a bit, so I'm going to explain it using an everyday example, and then I'll re bring the key terms in. Right, so I'm going to use the example of my dog. Because <laughs> when I was thinking about all class of conditioning, I was thinking about my dog. And I'm sure if your pets as well, you might know this. So, I remember getting my dog, and the first time we took my dog to the vet, um, he, he wasn't bothered at all. He had a bit of a sniff of the dog, so he was a bit, you know, kind of, mm. But his response would have been the same as if we took him to the shop, or we took him anywhere else. There was no response at all. Now, we took him into the vet, and he was prodding by the vet, didn't like it. Carrie was a bit upset. And so his response at being prodded, his natural response is carrying and fear. So that was his natural biological response. Now, we took him back to the vet a week later, and he was kind of a bit, hmm, but was fine again. However, then he was prodded again and therefore responded with fear. Now we noticed, after this happened a few times, that we noticed that as we pulled into the vet, my dog started cowering um, after a few times. And so what had happened is that the, obviously he had, that there was no response from the vet to start with, but because he'd been prodded so many times, that eventually, my dog had learned by association to fear the vet. So whenever, well to start with, we would pull out, we'd get out of the car and he'd be fearful. But then eventually we'd drive up the street that the vet was on and he would start to cower so he knew. And that is classical conditioning, that's all that it is. Now it's the key terms that scare people. So, I've got the key terms here, but really, if you really think about what they mean, I think it makes it easier for you. So if you think, right, Unconditioned stimulus. Don't be scared by it. What does stimulus mean? Well, stimulus means something that produces a response. So you know that the stimulus is not going to be any of these because these are the response. So you've already cut down half of the things it could be. And then think unconditioned. Right. Unconditioned means not conditioned. <laughs> so then we know it's not going to be further down. And that's all we have to think. The same with the unconditioned response. Okay. Response. Well, obviously, it's something that is caused by a stimulus, so you know it's got to be this side of the diagram, and so on and so forth. So all I'll do is pop the key terms in. So, going to the vet, to start with, no response. So you know, what's that? Well, it's got to be the neutral stimulus, hasn't it? Because it's, in, it's nothing's happening. So that is your neutral stimulus. And what do you get? You get no response. So, then, being prodded by the vet, 
naturally makes your dog fearful. So you know, well it's not going to be conditioned is it, because it's a natural response, and that's where you've got to remember it's physiological. So you know, that's the unconditioned stimulus, because naturally it has a response, and this is going to be the unconditioned response. Sorry, the unconditioned response. So, you know this, neutral stimulus plus unconditioned stimulus, apart from <laughs> There we go, equals um, unconditioned response. Now, you can work out eventually, this has to be the conditioned one, doesn't it? Because um, this is kind of, the vet normally produces no response. So you know this is the conditioned stimulus, and this is the conditioned response. And that's classical conditioning. Now, have a go yourself. So if you have a look over here, um, one place you will have done, or will be about to do, um, as I said, is with attachment. So, this is a diagram of how attachment can be formed according to classical conditioning. So, pause the video now, pause the video, and pause the video on this screen, <laughs> move out the way, and can you now do the same for this? So have a think that this here is the no response, this is a mother, just a, that's a feeling, that's a baby. Right, so you paused it, good. So let's just see if you've got this right. <laughs> okay, so the food is in conditioned stimulus, yeah, because it produces the unconditioned response, the natural physical response of the baby fe feeling pleasure because it feels full. So it's the natural response. And then here, the mother neutral stimulus. Mothers like to think that naturally that, that isn't true, but according to this theory, it's not. But actually, the baby has no response. To the mother, it could be anybody. But then, you pair the mother with the food, enough, enough, enough. The mother becomes a conditioned stimulus, and the conditioned response is the attachment. And that's classical conditioning.